Hello and welcome to this new series of videos uh, that I am going to be doing. This series of videos covers the liturgy, vestments, the church year, and things that you may want to know about liturgical churches. Now, I'm coming from the Lutheran tradition, but those who are from other liturgical traditions, especially in the Western church, you'll be able to follow along with a lot of this as well, and it will be relevant to you even if you are not part of specifically uh, the Lutheran tradition. So I want to start this off, uh, this series, talking about vestments. And so we're talking about vestments. Uh, that means the clothing that is worn during a liturgical service. Now, we're going to start by just talking a little bit about maybe not vestments, properly speaking at first, but just things that clergy wear. So things that you're going to see pastors, priests uh, wearing in more uh, liturgical traditions. So the first thing is the clerical collar. Now that's what I have on right here. I know sometimes my beard kind of hides it. Uh, and uh, you're going to see these clerical collars worn by clergy in all different traditions. Uh, as, as a Lutheran, I wear one. Lutheran pastors often wear them. Anglican priests wear them. Roman Catholics wear them as well, probably most commonly those three traditions. However, it's not unknown in other traditions. In fact, actually, the clerical collar uh, was invented by a Scottish Presbyterian in 1865. So it was actually worn by Presbyterians before anybody else, and then it became pretty standard in a number of traditions. And now there aren't really a lot of Presbyterians that even wear the clerical collar at all. It's not too common within that tradition. But when you see the clerical collar, it's really kind of a, a uniform uh, that pastors wear, priests wear, so that when clergy are walking around, you kind of know um, that somebody is is clergy. So when I wear mine around town, I've often had people come up to me and talk to me about all sorts of things or ask for prayer or you know, kind of bear their deepest, darkest secrets <laughs> just kind of out of nowhere uh, because the, the clerical collar kind of symbolizes I am a representative of Christ and it symbolizes I'm someone that's safe to talk to for a lot of people. Of course, it brings up bad feelings in other people. I've had people yell hell Satan at me and all sorts of other things when I have <laughs> a clerical collar as well. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, you, you could have all sorts of stories if you talk to clergy and ask how people have treated them when they wear their, their collars around. Um, but the cleric collar is also worn. Sometimes it's just called the clergy collar. The dog collar is like the, I guess, um, it, it's a way to refer to them that's not um, technically correct and seems a little rude. But I guess in England, it's uh, pretty standard to use that phrase. But uh, anyway, the, the, the collar... Uh, symbolizes the purity of Christ. That's the point of, of the white. Uh, now, what you'll see, if you look through the history of vestments, and we're going to kind of briefly cover that, if you want me to deal with each each kind of piece of clergy clothing individually and talk about different types and history, I could totally do that as part of the series if you have interest, but that would take me uh, a long time. Here's our kind of overview video in this one here. Uh, but the white generally is said to symbolize the, the purity of Christ, and we see the uh, white being used for a lot of different uh, aspects of clerical wear. Uh, you'll see sometimes a round collar, sometimes it's just called roundies informally, and then you'll see the tab collar, which is like this. Uh, the Roman tab collar is a little thinner than this. This tends to be more common for Anglicans to have one that's a little wider, and Lutherans can kind of go back and forth. All right. Uh, and oh, one other thing for clergy shirts, if you see somebody with a black clergy shirt, uh, that usually is a priest or a pastor. Sometimes there are Protestants that will wear other colors. You'll see gray, blue, green, white, I mean, all sorts of colors. Uh, black is kind of most, most typical and traditional. Uh, bishops will often wear purple shirts. So if you see somebody in a purple clerical shirt, they are either being liturgically inappropriate or they are some kind of a, a bishop. So then the, the second piece of clergy wear that you're just going to see kind of as daily attire is not so much daily attire anymore in most parts of the world with most pastors, but some still do they wear, wear them daily, uh, and that is is the cassock. So the cassock is the black robe that is, is often worn. Uh, with you'll see a collar with it as well. Usually Neo from the Matrix wears a cassock. If you don't know them from, uh, you know, from your experience in churches, you probably at least know that. Uh, it's really just based on what was the tunic of ancient Rome. And so people wore things like this, and then it 
became standardized for the use of, of Christian clergy. This is, for the majority of Christian history, really it's been pretty standard that some form of the cassock, now it's changed throughout the years, but some form of the cassock is pretty standard for clergy to wear. And that's true both in the East and the West, they have different forms of them. And it's only been more recently that the clerical collar has kind of taken the place of what was the cassock and that the, the pastor or priest wears more of like what is just a modern uh, suit rather than the cassock as regular dress. Uh, cassocks, there are different kinds. Uh, the East actually has an inner and an outer cassock. But in the West, the cassock, there's just one cassock, uh, and it either usually has 33 buttons or 39 buttons. The 33 buttons uh, represents the, the years of the life of Christ. He was on this earth for 33 years prior to his death, and, and then his resurrection, of course. So the, the each of the buttons symbolizes one of the years of the life of Christ. Now, there are Anglican cassocks, which have 39 buttons, and the 39 buttons are for the 39 articles, uh, which is the doctrinal statement of the Anglican Church, or the Church of England. Oftentimes, this is worn with a band cincture. So a band cincture, and we'll talk about cinctures a little bit below uh, as, as we're beyond this as we keep moving. Uh, so a, a band cincture is a, basically a black band that is tied around um, the midsection of the cassock. It is usually black, just as the clergy shirts are, and purple is worn by bishops. Again, purple being a color that is reserved for bishops so that you know the distinction in ecclesiastical offices. There are some other things that you can see worn around on a kind of, in kind of daily attire from, from pastors or priests. The one is a beretta, uh, which is a kind of square-looking hat, and it has a tuft on top. It's it's pointed on, on four sides. The, the beretta is not that common, um, but you may see it occasionally. Similar to that, there is the zucchetto, which is a also sometimes just called a skull cap. Uh, so it's a little skull cap, uh, black as it is for a regular clergy. Uh, however, it would be purple for bishops as well. And that can be worn usually just around with a cassock if that is is done. This supposedly was done to keep people's heads warm, especially people who were balding. <laughs> That's at least this is what I have read. So, uh, not sure of the validity of that. But uh, okay, then we have uh, the next piece, which is the pectoral cross. Now you'll notice I am wearing a pectoral cross right here. Uh, this has the Luther rose, which is kind of the Lutheran symbol. But I have I have multiple pectoral crosses. This is just the one I happen to have on right now. Now, within Lutheranism or within Eastern Orthodoxy, the pectoral cross or this kind of large cross is worn by clergy, uh, and that is all clergy. Really, the pectoral cross was initially worn by all sorts of Christians, and then eventually this this, this there became a distinction between kind of the smaller cross necklaces that clergy or sorry that lay people often wear, and then clergy wear the larger pectoral crosses. Um, in the Roman Catholic tradition, however, these are not generally worn by priests; they are actually only worn by the Pope, cardinals bishops or or abbots. So if you see a pastor walking around with a cross and a clerical collar, probably a Lutheran, maybe an Anglican. I don't know how commonly Anglicans wear them. My Anglican priest friends that I see around don't really wear pectoral crosses, but uh, I don't know if that is is that common outside of that. So let me know. I'd be interested to hear uh, from Anglicans what, what's common in your tradition, what you usually see. Um, all right, so those are kind of the, the daily the pieces of daily wear that you may see a pastor or a priest, uh, any kind of clergy walking around in. So now we're going to get into then categories of, of vestments. So the first things we're going to talk about is what would be worn in just kind of a regular, uh, some kind of a matins or a vesper service or any kind of non-communion service. And then we're going to talk about Eucharistic vestments for communion services. So uh, we're talking about vestments now that are worn just at some kind of prayer service, whatever that may be. Uh, there is the cassock and the surplus. So you have the cassock, which we already talked about as daily clergy wear, and then the surplus is a white garment that then goes on top of it. If I am doing some kind of prayer service, uh, you know, like a matins, compline, something like that, I usually do wear the cassock and surplus along with an alb, which we'll be talking about next. But the cassock and surplus also is what is worn often by altar servers. So it, it's not necessarily just ordained clergy, but those who are helping out in the service liturgically in one way or another. Uh, the white 
of the, the surplus symbolizes baptismal purity, that in our baptisms we are uh, brought into Christ and we receive his purity. We are made pure, we are forgiven, we are clean. The next uh, liturgical, the next vestment, which is probably the one that you see the most often, especially among Lutheran clergy, is the alb. Now, the alb is basically just a version of what was the white tunic that was commonly worn in ancient Rome. So, a Christian clergy adapted what was a pretty common uh, just outfit in, in ancient Rome and retained it for, for clergy. So the symbolism here is, is pretty clear, maybe more than any others, because we have clear symbolism in the book of Revelation that we're told that the saints in heaven are arrayed in white. They're wearing white robes. They are white as they are washed in the blood of the lamb. So the imagery there is very clear. They, have, they are cleansed from their sins. And so they are this shining, innocent, pure white. And so we are reminded of the purity of Christ and how Christ makes us pure through his uh, forgiveness and grace as we see those who are arrayed in white. And we also are reminded of the reality that when we come together in worship, we are joining with the saints in heaven. We, we speak about the communion of saints in the creed. We are part of that same universal singular church as those who are arrayed in white. So we have a piece of that or a picture of heaven as we see people wearing those uh, white robes that we call an alb. Now, most often today, people wear the cassock alb. Uh, the cassock alb is really replacement for both the traditional alb and the cassock into one garment. So the cassock alb is going to be a little slimmer fitting. It's going to be a little trimmer uh, than, than the traditional alb. So a traditional alb is, is bigger. It also is a traditional alb is worn with what's called an amice underneath. So an amice is a, a square white cloth that is worn over the shoulders, and then it, it ties. It has two little ties on it. Now, the the symbolism that is tied together with the wearing of the animus, it, the an, amus, <laughs> is uh, that it symbolizes the helmet of salvation. So there are different vesting prayers, and I could do a separate video on vesting prayers for, for clergy, uh, or just those who are interested in what those vesting prayers are. But the vesting prayer with the amus is about the helmet of salvation. We have that language in the book of Ephesians as we're talking about uh, the armor of God. So it also really has a practical purpose as well. Uh, and the practical purpose is that it was kind of a barrier garment between uh, the, the pastor's regular daily outfit and then the alb so it would protect the outfit from, from sweat. Uh, the, the alb also is not just something that is worn by pastors. You can see albs that are worn by altar servers or deacons or others as well. So it is a liturgical vestment, but it is not limited to ordained clergy. Now, the next vestment that we're going to be speaking about is one that is just restricted to the ordained, and that is the stole. So the stole is a, it's known as a symbol of ordination. So if you see somebody that has a stole, you know that they have been ordained. Now the stole looks something like a, a scarf. It's probably based on scarves that had been worn by Roman soldiers that were then adapted by Christian clergy in Rome. Uh, but that scarf, that, that stole is worn to demonstrate that one has indeed been ordained into the office of the holy ministry. Sometimes you will see deacons with stoles that are worn differently. They're worn sideways uh, rather than all in the front to, uh, to show their office as, as deacon. So generally the stole is given to the pastor at the time of ordination. Through the laying out of hands, there is then the receiving of the stole and then it can be worn to preside over services in the church. The symbolism of the stole uh, is it symbolizes the napkin that uh, Christ used in washing the disciples' feet. It also is a symbol of the yoke that of Christ that is worn or borne by the one who is representing Christ in the office of the holy ministry. Uh, the, the stole, as many other elements of clerical wear are going to represent the colors of the church year. So we'll do a separate video on the colors of the church year and what they mean, but the stole is going to uh, all but match the colors of the church year that will also be displayed in altar linens and other things uh, that the pastor is wearing. Um, it usually has some kind of imagery on it. It's not usually plain. You'll often see crosses or all sorts of other religious imagery as well uh, that is often embroidered on the front. All right, the next thing that you're going to see uh, in 
anytime you really see a pastor in an alb, you are going to see him wearing a cincture. Now, what is a cincture? A cincture is essentially a rope or a cloth that is tied around the waist. Now, uh, this really is used for more of a practical purpose than anything else, and that practical purpose is that the alb is a very large garment, and so it kind of just keeps the alb in its place. Now, that isn't the case quite as much uh, with the cassock alb that is most commonly worn today. However, they are still worn by most pastors. Now, there are two different kinds. You can have a rope, which is probably more common, or uh, you can have a fabric cincture, which is more like a thicker kind of fabric uh, belt, which I happen to think looks a lot nicer, but you know, uh, the, the ropes are, are more, more common. So the symbolism there is it symbolizes chastity and purity. Now, next, uh, the final of these vestments that are worn in non-Eucharistic services, and that doesn't mean they are, you know, albs and stuff are also worn in Eucharistic services, but uh, the final one is the cope. Now, a cope sounds like a cape, and it looks kind of like a cape. Uh, so basically, it's an open cloak. It has clasps at the front. It has a hood on the back. For a time, they were made without hoods. The hoods have now come back. Now, these... Uh, copes are generally worn when there is some kind of outdoor processional. So copes are not very common today, uh, but when there were longer processionals, especially outside in colder weather, the cope was something that would keep the clergy warm. I have worn mine for processionals uh, in the past, but they are really not all that common today. Now we're going to move on uh, to our third section here as we're talking about Eucharistic vestments. So these are things you're going to see in a Mass in a Eucharistic service. So the, the first and most common thing that you're going to see within Eucharistic services is a chasuble. A uh, chasuble looks kind of like a poncho uh, that is usually worn over the alb. It's over the alb and a stole. The chasuble will also match the colors of the liturgical year. So when you have a stole on, you have a chasuble over it, they're going to match each other. So these are used only for Eucharistic services. So when a minister is presiding over, you know, matins or vespers, they are not going to be wearing the chasuble. The chasuble often is, were, is used during the entirety of the Eucharistic service. There are times where a pastor will simply wear the stole throughout the beginning of the service, what we call the service of the word. And then once the service of the Holy Sacrament uh, starts at the latter half of the church service, then the, the pastor or priest will don a chasuble. But usually it's worn uh, during the entirety of the service. Now, this was pretty standard for Lutherans for about 200 years after the Reformation. So well into the 1700s, Lutherans were wearing chasubles. This was a standard uh, garment that was worn during during Masses when there was the, the celebration of the Eucharist. So eventually this kind of was traded out for the Geneva gown, which I think was, kind of, was something quite unfortunate. And chasubles have seen a bit of a comeback in the last hundred years. So you won't see them in every Lutheran service, but you will see them in many. Uh, they weren't used in Anglican churches very often at all for a time, but with the liturgical renewal movements in the 19th and 20th century, the development of Anglo-Catholicism, they have become quite common there as well. The chasuble is often said to represent love or charity. Then we have uh, the maniple. Uh, a maniple is it kind of looks like a little stole that is worn over the left arm by the priest. And this matches the colors of the other vestments. So it will be the same color as the chasuble. It will, all, it will also match the stole that is worn. This was likely first used uh, in church services. We see it actually as early as the 6th century. But it was likely first used as something that would be held there in case the pastor needed to uh, wipe their face or wipe their hands. You know, oftentimes... Uh, if you're talking for a really long time uh, and it's a hot day, you start to get kind of sweaty. So th there's probably a practical purpose behind the maniple. But this symbolizes the rope uh, by which Christ was brought, dragged to uh, the cross at Calvary. Then we have the delmatic. Now, the delmatic is something that you may not have seen. It's not nearly as common as many of these others because to have a delmatic, you need to have a liturgical deacon. Now, this is for the liturgical deacon. We can have another separate video on what exactly is a liturgical deacon and what is a subdeacon and what are these offices that have developed that seem a little odd or maybe strange. We don't maybe know what, what those things represent. Um, 
so we can do something separate on that. But the Dalmatic is used uh, specifically by Deacons. It's similar to the Chasuble, but it has sleeves, whereas the Chasuble is more like a poncho that's open on the sides. Uh, the Dalmatic has uh, small sleeves. There's also a smaller version called the Tunicle that is then worn by subdeacons. Now, you're not really going to have the office of subdeacon in Lutheran churches, at least as far as I know of. Uh, <laughs> I've never really seen it. But it is a, an office uh, that, that does exist in some traditions. Uh, now, just final quick category before we end this video, I'm just going to mention a couple things that are worn by bishops. So, uh, if there are some uniquenesses that you'll see that are worn by, you know, higher clergy bishops. There are, you know, cardinals. Cardinals are certainly not part of our tradition, so I'm not really going to talk about what cardinals wear, but, uh, but bishops are something that is pretty, pretty broadly ecumenical. We see mention of bishops as early as uh, the second century with Ignatius of Antioch's uh, epistles, and there are many Protestant churches that have bishops, such as the Anglican, many Lutherans, and certainly in the Eastern churches and the Roman Catholic traditions. Uh, so bishops have, as I mentioned, often wear purple clerical shirts, purple clergy shirts. So if you see somebody with a purple um, cassock or a purple clergy shirt, they are likely a bishop. Or if they are not a bishop, they shouldn't be wearing one, but they may be wearing one anyway because they're confused. Um, but that is the, the wear of a bishop. So sometimes within uh, the Lutheran tradition where you don't have someone who's technically called a bishop, you have a, well, what were superintendents after the Reformation. And then you have uh, sometimes what are called district presidents, say in the LCMS, or our regional pastors or presiding pastors. They're really serving the, the function or office of bishop. So oftentimes they will wear um, that color, even though the title is not technically bishop, they are higher clergy. Um, the bishop will often also have a crozier. Uh, if you've seen one of these, this is a, this is a cane, and these have been used as early as the seventh century. And this is true with most of these vestments and the general order of the liturgical service in the West as well. Is it's pretty much all been pretty standardized by the beginnings of the Middle Ages. And the crozier, though, is a staff that symbolizes Christ as the good shepherd. It's a reminder to the bishop that they, in their role as a shepherd of the church, and a shepherd that's watching over other shepherds, watching over uh, pastors and other clergy in the church, that they are to imitate Christ's work as the good shepherd. So there's often imagery of Christ as the good shepherd on the crozier as well. And then there is what is often probably thought of if you think about a bishop, you think about the hats that they wear. And that is is a mitre. So a mitre is a unique headpiece that only a bishop will wear. This developed in the 11th century, and especially in a lot of later medieval paintings. If you see, say, a painting of someone like Augustine, who was a bishop in the early church and saints in the early church, they'll often be displayed wearing mitre. So they probably were not actually wearing them at the time. It becomes a symbol of, of a bishop. So that is our kind of quick overhead, bird's eye view of vestments and clergy wear in the church. And I want to get into some detail about these. Let me know if you want me to keep doing that. But here's a helpful, hopefully just quick overview of what some of these garments are. We're not getting to the specifics of different kinds of each of these things. Uh, and hopefully you found this somewhat helpful. So you know if you see your pastor or priest wearing something in a service, you know what he's doing. So thanks so much. If you like this video and want to see other content like it, make sure you do subscribe on here and we'll see you in the next one. God bless.